Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Josh and today I wanted to make a quick video about the M1 Mac Mini and its video editing capabilities. Now, I know there's loads of videos on this already since it first came out at the end of last year. However, all those videos seem to be aiming towards um, the higher bitrate Canon cameras and the RED cameras and even some of the uh, better Sony cameras like the A7S III. Um, and I've not actually seen many videos about um, using the Fuji camera that I have and the Panasonic S5, so that's why I sort of wanted to make this video to show you guys, if you are using the same cameras as I am, what the M1 performance is like uh, with these two bodies. So I'm using the Panasonic S5 and the Fuji X-T3. Um, the X-T3 came out in, uh, I think it was September 2018, and I was really interested uh, in the camera when it first came out, but it seemed like no computer could handle the file type of the H.265 um, video codec, um, like literally not until the M1 came out. Um, so it actually meant that I didn't actually buy Buy this camera until about two weeks ago, um, purely because of what I'd seen online about having to make proxies and the whole proxy workflow with the X-T3, like that to me just was not a viable solution. So it meant that I waited up until now to buy it. And then the S5, that came out at the end of last year too, just like the uh, Mac Mini did. Um, but I've not really seen many videos about uh, the editing performance of the M1 using the uh, S5's uh, video codex that it has uh, built in. We're not talking about the raw capabilities over HDMI today, just the internal video. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview of my experience using it. So let's just jump in to my computer and I'll show you what it's like. Okay, so before we get into it, I just want to show you the specs of the M1 Mac Mini I'm using. So um, as you can see here, it is the Mac Mini uh, with 16 gigabytes of unified memory, which is actually the most uh, configurable memory you can actually have on the um, Mac Minis at the moment. So if we just go to Final Cut Pro, now I've got two libraries open. I've got one for the XT3 project, which is currently in my timeline, and I've also got one here uh, for a video I recently shot with the S5. So if we look at the Fuji project, you can see in the timeline that I've got a few clips loaded up already um, with color corrections and all that sort of stuff applied. Um, I have shot the 25p footage in the all intra codec and the 50p of course is conformed to the long GOP codec. So here at the start, uh, these four clips were shot at 50p and they were handheld. And basically um, I wanted to show you guys what performance is like after you've done all the stabilization, color corrections, uh, slowing down the 50p to a 50% speed, etc. because that is actually how you'd use the footage. I don't really think it's that viable showing you, oh this is what it's like playing the raw footage when actually it becomes a lot more taxi on the computer when you actually start working with it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit uh, play and show you exactly how smooth it is. So as you can see this is the 50p that's been slowed down. Um, you can see here it's not lagging at all, skipping between them. Um, it's all shot handheld and on some of these clips I've also applied stabilization as well as basic color corrections. So if I just go back here and show you, if I take off the corrections uh, you can see that this is actually shot in F-Log, so this is actually after you've gone and coloured it. Now, please don't take the mic out of my colour grading on this. Um, this is just for this video. I've not spent ages colour grading it. I just wanted to show you what it's like when you load a lot and a few um, of the effects. So I've got the colour wheels, the colour curves, and then on this base grade layer, I've also got the F-Log to um, wide dynamic range uh, BT709 uh, conversion lab. So yeah, that's that. Um, and then scrubbing in 50p, I'll just show you that now. So you can see it's going really, really smoothly. There's no, there's no lagginess at all when you scrub for each one, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, it makes it really, really easy for editing. Um, again, this is on the um, N1 Mac. It's actually worth noting as well, um, the place that I'm storing uh, this media where the uh, project is actually referencing the media from is actually from a Western Digital 2 terabyte My Passport drive, um, which is not a fast drive at all. Um, the project file uh, is actually stored on the Samsung T5 SSD. So I'm actually editing off of the S5, but I'm referencing the media from the Western Digital Passport drive, if that makes sense. Just so you guys know that there's no sort of trickery in terms of how you know I'm using or referencing the um, video itself. Um, yeah, I thought that's worth mentioning since not many people do mention that part of it. So yeah, now let's go over to our 25p footage. So this is just some footage of me sitting down doing one of these sort of videos. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna hit play. 
So as you can see, absolutely no issues there. It's um, absolutely fine playing it back. Um, this again was shot, if I show you, this was also shot in F-Log. So as you can see, it's flatter than anything. And then obviously applying the color correction and it's absolutely fine. And scrubbing, you can see here, the scrubbing is absolutely fine. It's pretty smooth. Um, yeah, and also it's also worth noting that I am actually running the uh, capture um, screen capture software too at the same time while showing you these. So not only is it processing this really, really high quality video, but it's also recording what you're seeing now on the screen. And as you can see, it's absolutely fine. It works perfectly. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with that. Right, okay, so now let's go to the Panasonic S5. So this is a video I made recently for a client, um, and uh, this was all shot on the S5 on a mixture of 25p and 50p in the highest available bitrate inside the S5. Um, some clips have been stabilized, some clips haven't been stabilized. So like if you look here, this one's not been stabilized. Let's try and find one that has been stabilized. Uh... Okay, yeah, so this clip here has been stabilized. So some clips have been stabilized. As you can see on each clip, there has been uh, some effects added, so like um, curves and color wheels, all that sort of stuff, as well as a few correction layers here as well. So everything's been loaded on. You can also see here that I've got some uh, sound effects and some audio, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press play and just show you exactly how it's running on the M1 with everything loaded on as is. So here we go. So as you can see, running absolutely smoothly, not got any uh, drop frames. Um, it's not, you know, like lagging or skipping anything, which is really nice. And like I said, this is with all the corrections that anyone normally do with footage already added to it. As I think it's more worthwhile showing you guys exactly what it will be like after you've done all that sort of stuff. Because normally for any computer, when you're video editing, the moment you start to see it uh, um, chug along a little bit slower is when you start adding all the effects, um, the stabilization, the color grade all that sort of stuff um so yeah that is this after the fact after it's edited um, edited and how it's running um and then i'll just show you just scrubbing through here grab my playhead so you can see scrubbing through each one it's pretty smooth there's no there's no lag there whatsoever so yeah like the m1 mac mini uh can handle these codecs just fine. Um, there's no issues here whatsoever. Hard drives do play some part in it when you are uh, loading in or referencing media. Um, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, so as you can see, absolutely fine. Works perfectly and yeah, really, really happy with the results that I'm able to get with this. It's made editing so much quicker. So this time I want to show you guys the exact same test, but this time on my MacBook Pro, which I used to do all of my video editing on. Um, so as you can see here, um, this is a MacBook Pro 15 inch late 2013 model with a quad core i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM and the NVIDIA GeForce uh, 750M 2 gigabytes dedicated GPU. Um, so of course this is one of the more specced out older MacBooks I guess for video editing. Um, but I'll just show you what it's like comparatively into, um, to the M1. So. Now I have loaded into my timeline the same Fuji X-T3 uh, project. So uh, all of this is your 25p footage that's been slowed down to 50% speed, uh, some stabilization added, um, and of course color corrections added. So I'm gonna hit play now. Right, so I lagged a little bit there. Um, you can see it's not as smooth. It's sort of lagging and uh, trying to catch up. Um, yep, now it's completely lost itself. Yeah, that's not cool. So as you can see, that is not easy to edit with. Like you could not edit doing that. So the 50p uh, with all the effects and stuff added, uh, you definitely need to use proxies if you were to edit on a machine like this. Now let's go to the 25p footage. When it, when it loads, there we go. And okay, we're playing. Okay, it's doing pretty badly. Yep, there's no way you can edit that. So yeah, I mean, I think that's a testament to show just how good the M1 Mac is, or should I say how uh, much better optimized it is to handle these video codecs. So now I have the S5 project loaded on the MacBook. I'm gonna play it again um, with all the effects, color grade, etc., loaded, just like I did on the M1, and see how that uh, pans out. So here we go. Okay, uh, yep, we're in Lag City. It's pretty choppy. Yeah, I would. It's 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 not usable for editing. You couldn't 
edit using this. No way. Um, just trying to scrub through the timeline here. I mean, scrubbing's actually not too bad. It's actually handling the scrubbing a lot better than I thought it would. But then if I go ahead and press play, it's just, yeah, it's not good at all. So I think that's a testament to show just how much better optimized the M1 processor is for these video codecs. And of course, the optimization is what makes it run so much better. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, if you are someone that is looking to purchase an M1 Mac Mini and have either a Fuji X-T3 or one of the Panasonic full frame cameras like the S5, the S1 or even the S1H, um, I hope this has helped you realize that actually you're gonna be absolutely fine using the M1 Max. Um, even the sort of base grade ones I think will be pretty good, like the eight gigabyte of unified memory, I'm pretty sure you'd still have a pretty good performance um, to price ratio there, comparatively to you know some of the high-end um, video editing PCs and stuff. Of course, if there's anything I haven't answered for you in this video, then please comment down below what else you'd like to know and I'll do my best to answer that for you so you can have peace of mind before you buy an M1 Max for video editing. Um, please subscribe if you haven't done so already and hopefully I shall see you in the next one. Thank you.